Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Prasenji Panda. Uh, I'm from Department of English and Foreign Languages, Guru Kastas Vishwavidyalaya. I'm here to uh, to do deal with structuralism, which is the MA course. I'll be telling about uh, the details analysis on you know, on, on literature theory uh, and uh, the structuralism and the objectives of the structuralism and how it came and why it is necessary for understanding uh, literature. If we come back to uh, uh, you know the background uh, and the origin, uh, you know structuralism finds its origin in the in the work of early 20th century uh, in a linguist. Uh, Ferdinand de Saussure. You know, there is a book, uh, you know, compiling his essays. Uh, that is, the book is called A Course in General Linguistics. That is published in 1916. Uh, Saussure called for a scientific study of languages. Before Saussure, it was not there to uh, study, uh, you know, uh, study, you know, through, this, through the study of language, you want to get a meaning of a text. You know, uh, <clears throat> before, uh, before uh, you know, clinging to that uh, structuralism, we should go for uh, go for uh, the new criticism and the Russian formalism uh, at the same time, because you should know that's what actually a new criticism is. Without understanding new criticism, you will not be understanding uh, this uh, structuralism. What was the new criticism at that age? You know, the structuralism and the new criticism and the Russian formalism, these are very contemporary. Uh, let me give you a clear picture of, uh, of uh, uh, new criticism. New criticism was, was originated in America. Whether, whether uh, you know, whereas uh, Russian formalism actually is, is originated in, in Russia. Now, what is new criticism? New criticism means uh, when you are understanding a text, through its language, or by its language. You are not taking any help from uh, the authorial background, the author's uh, you know, biographical uh, details, or the history, or when it uh, originated, or when it uh, written, uh, you know, the, the political uh, background of the text, or the sociological background of the text, or the other relevant you know, related idea uh, related to that very text. You will not going to deal with that. Rather, you are accepting that a text is a text is a text. That does mean when you are analyzing a text as an autonomous artifact. Do you understand that? So this new criticism, uh, in a kind of a kind of a, you can you can help you you know help you to understand the structuralism. When Shashur comes in. Uh, See, he, you know, he actually emphasizes that a structural study of language, that when you are reading a text, how to get its meaning? Now, you are not taking help from the author. You are not taking help from the political scenario of that age when it was written. You are not taking help from the historical background. So what I actually left out you know, in front of you, that's the text. So you are emphasizing on the text. And when you are, you know, when you are reading a text, what you can get, you can get the language. So through the language, you can get the meaning of a text. Is it okay? So, but then look at this, what Sashur actually is telling. You are saying that in the text, there are several elements. As for example, there is a grammar, there is a phonemes, there is a sounds, there is a morphemes. So those are unit. So those play a big role to, you know, to, to, to give a meaning. Meaning is not at all a kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a mystical thing. Meaning is produced to the relationship of the elements uh, which are there in that very text. That's it, okay. So, so this is there. Next another is, there is no reality outside this text. When you, are, when you want to get a meaning of a text, you will not be referring to the outside reality. Rather, you will be confining yourself into the very, very text itself. You'll be going deep down to the text. You will be going deep down to the structure of the language to understand the text. You understand that? So now next, next uh, in that very, uh, in, and text is a kind of a system of signs and the relationship among the various signs and the language, you have to take it into consider, consideration and how you will be uh, 
understanding it takes now when you will be having a clear cut understanding the relationship between a kind you know different kind of unit as i told you before a different kind of signs as i told you before is it okay so this is what uh, actually you know in the in in, in this uh, slide you know, next slide is the diachronic study and the synchronic study now what do you mean by diachronic study diachronic study is the historical development of a language that is called the philology now sashu doesn't like that concept of diachronic study it's it's all about what do you mean by diachronic again diachronic is called in a kind of a comparison of a you know difference between the similarity and the dissimilarity of other language and you will be you will be uh, tracing the development of a language through a certain period of time sashu rejected the idea he actually takes synchronic study what do you mean by synchronic study my dear students synchronic study is the study of a language at a given point of time as for example you are take you know you are you are reading the no, you know the notes and the and the written uh, text in the slide so if i if you want to read the text if you want to if you want to analyze the any any sentence any 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 paragraph or any sentence that should be a synchronic study why because you are not going to compare the sentence with the with the other sentences with the historic you know going back to the history you will not be comparing so what you are taking you are taking the sentence right now and you started understanding that language is it okay so this is called a synchronic study now comes to that another two thing which you is is very much important what is that that is called lang and parallel what do you mean by lang the lang is is the inherent grammar of a language that governs the speech every language has got a grammar is it okay now that actually controls the speech and what do you mean by parallel parallel is the individual's act of speech or performance or individual utterance that is governed by the lang is it okay so everywhere you can find the lang and the parallel so lang is the inherent grammar of a language and a parallel is that the speech act that is called the performance of a individual utterance how you are speaking as for example parts of speech as for example tense prepositions these are called lang and when you are using in your in your language those things it's called a parallel this parallel may be a different from one one man to the another how i am absorbing the grammar dependent de depends upon that now come to that uh, you know the nature of linguistic sign uh, it's very important part my dear students please uh, uh, uh try to uh, be attentive in this now as i as i told you that sashur actually tell that the any form of a language is 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 all about the sign the symbol the symbol is or the sign is divided between the two things one is signified another is signified what do you mean is signified signified is a sound and what is signified signified is a concept or an image or an abstract idea now there is a tree now the tree is the sound of the tree is t r e e tree and the tree image actually comes to our mind but there is no relationship there is no positive relationship between tree and the and the and the tree which actually comes as a referent we may call a tree but we may not you know we may suggest is a is a bat so there is no such positive relationship between a signifier and a signified we may call a duster and we may suggest is a cat there is no such relationship between the sound and the objective signifiers so the relationship between a signifier and the signified is an arbitrary one the relationship between a is signified and the signified is not fixed one you may call tree and you may suggest a ball no single sign has a fixed meaning one signifier may have many signifier for example red has got many signified like passion revolution love warning etc like was different signifier has one signifier for example h2o means pani in hindi water in english 
Jalin Bengali, etc. One funny example uh, to make you understand that, you know, that sign doesn't have any fixed signifier. That is, when we say that, I love chicken, that doesn't mean that you are going to love chicken. What do you mean by that? You will be, you will be killing that chicken and you will be cooking it and you will be eating it. So the love, the word love doesn't connote, it doesn't suggest the love as we love our parents or something like that. Your love means you'll be killing that chicken and you'll be cooking it and that you can make it a delicious food. So therefore, I can, I, you know, uh, it, it's, it is evident from the fact that there is no such relationship between, uh, you know, the fixed relationship between signifier and the signifier. Now, another relationship between signifier and signifier is they are self-referential. No sign can exist in isolation. You have to refer to somebody else as for example a white is a white because it's not a not a black so white is referring to the black that means no sign can get its meaning in isolation it possesses its meaning by referring to the other sign of the system as for example one brick doesn't have any significance in alone if it lays in the in the you know in the ground but the same brick has got its meaning when we put it in the world while we are making the world. Do you understand that? So no word has got its meaning in isolation. Every word will be referring to the another word to get its meaning. A white is a white because it's not a black. But this relationship between signifier and the signifier is one is arbitrary, second is referential preferential, third is negatively established. They are very much negative. A white is a white because it's not a, it's not a black. We use the white chalk in a blackboard. We cannot use the white board in a, in a white board, white chalk in a white board. So this contrasting, they are very much contrast. So this contrasting feature should be there in that very relationship between signifier and the signifier. Otherwise, there will be no meaning at all. It cannot produce the meaning. We get meaning by contrasting. Like we do not use that, as I told you, that white chalk or the marker in the whiteboard. Rather, we use white chalk in the in the blackboard. So cat is a cat because it's a different from the rat. So if we say cat and the image actually comes to the cat, it's not at all a, a kind of a kind of a meaning it is giving. The cat is a cat only because cat is not at all a rat. Cat is not at all a flower. Cat is not uh, not like a laptop. Cat is not like a book. Cat is not like a Pain. That's therefore we actually take for granted that cat the sound actually is a cat the image actually is coming to our mind. Now there is another relationship actually comes to our mind that is syntagmatic and the paradigm. It's very important. What do you mean by syntagmatic? Syntagmatic is a term that refers to the sequential characteristic of a language. What do you mean by that? When you construct words and sentences we follow a certain order in arranging the individual items. For example, I eat rice in the afternoon. Here, each and every linguistic unit is arranged and distributed properly. We, we are not supposed to change the word. If we, if we change the border, as for example, you can change, you can change eat, you can change rice in a, and jumble it away. Can you get in a minute? No. Every single, uh, single signs or the unit they are arranged in a in an association, you know, in a kind of a chain, in a kind of a good arrangement. That's why we are getting the meaning. So syntagmatic is nothing but an association, the chain of association, which is actually giving a, a perfect meaning. This chain is called a association. Now coming back to the paradigmatic. Paradigmatic is a vertical. That that is the term describes a substitutional relationship that a linguistic unit has uh, with the other unit, or probably kind of a choice. As for example, I hunted a beer. Each of the words can be exchanged with a number of other words without changing the basic symmetrical arrangement. We're not going to change that symmetrical syntagmatic chain. You just take it as a, I hunted a beer. You can change I to you. You hunted a beer. You can change you uh, uh, to uh, uh, you know Ram. Ram hunted a beer. You can replace Ram with Rahim. Rahim hunted a beer. Likewise, you can change I, hunted, you know, you just delete the hunted and you can take it, uh, uh, you can call uh, I made uh, a kite. 
and then Ram made a kite. Then you made a kite. As for example, then you can change the bear, that is the object. You can change, I hunt a tiger. I, you know, R Ram hunted a tiger. So you can change uh, one unit by another unit, you can change it. And then uh, you can, uh, you, you know, you can uh, go on by creating or producing a different kind of sentences. In the, in the conclusion of my lecture, I can tell you that the literature is the reflection of the culture and is modeled on the structure of language. Everything, everything the language, uh, the, the literature and the culture, they're the product of the, of the system. What is the system? The system is the language. Without the language, you cannot understand the culture. And without the language, you cannot understand the literature. So meaning of a text cannot be found outside of the system. That is outside the reality. It gains its meaning by referring to its own constitutive elements and the laws. So this session actually is telling us that within this system of signifier and the signifier, we can get the meaning by referring to the, uh, by referring with its elements existing in the, in the system. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for listening. Uh, you know, uh, obviously it will help you out. Uh, and thank you.